name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We return into St Mary Magdalene as we celebrate communion together on this day. The 16th of July, Church remembers St Osmond, who was the Bishop of Salisbury at the end of the 11th century, dying in 1099. In particular, he was remembered for working out the liturgy of the Church in that diocese, which became the way that communion was celebrated across England before long. Jesus is the Good Shepherd, and every generation he raises up overseers to shepherd the Church of God that he obtained with his own blood. We are sinners. Let us call to mind the times when we have failed to hear his voice and not followed where he has led. Lord Jesus, you call by name those who are yours. Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you lead us in the right paths for your name's sake. Christ have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the door of the sheepfold. Those who enter by you will be saved. Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is governed and sanctified. Hear our prayer, which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth, to the glory of your name. Through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now we go to your homes as we listen to the readings for today. A reading from the prophecy of Isaiah. The way of the righteous is level. O just one, you make smooth the path of your righteousness. In the path of your judgments, O Lord, we wait for you. Your name and your renown are the soul's desire. My soul yearns for you in the night. My spirit within me earnestly seeks you. For when your judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world learn righteousness. O Lord, in distress they sought you. They poured out a prayer when your chastening was on them. Like a woman with child who writhes and cries out in her pangs when she is near her time. So were we because of you, O Lord. We were with child, we writhed. But we gave birth only to wind. We have won no victories on earth. And no one is born to inhabit the world. Your dead shall live, their corpses shall rise. O dwellers in the dust, awake and sing for joy, for your dew is a radiant dew, and the earth will give birth to those long dead. This is the word of the Lord. You will arise and have pity on Zion. It is time to have mercy upon her. Surely the time has come, for your servants love her very stones and feel compassion for her dust. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my crying come before you. Then shall the nations fear your name, O Lord, and all the kings of the earth your glory, when the Lord has built upon Zion, and shown himself in glory. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my crying come before you. When he has turned to the prayer of the destitute, 
and has not despised their plea. This shall be written for those that come after. And a people yet unborn shall praise the Lord. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my crying come before you. For he has looked down from his holy height, from the heavens he beheld the earth, that he might hear the sighings of the prisoner, and set free those condemned to die. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my crying come before you. Alleluia, alleluia. We do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said, Come to me, all you that we are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and Holy Spirit the Comforter. Amen. As I listen to today's Gospel reading, I keep wondering about Stephen Cottrell, our new Archbishop of York, as he humbly takes up the Braganza Crozier, signifying his status. I watched his confirmation of election service last Thursday and was, as always, in awe of Stephen. How can a man undertaking a task of such magnitude as Stephen has just accepted hear Jesus say that my yoke is easy and my burden is light without some scepticism? What a tall order, following the giant footsteps of John Sentamu. Surely the role of Archbishop of York must make even the strongest tremble in their boots, knowing the challenges the English and in fact the worldwide church faces. I know Stephen a little because he is president of the College of Preachers, to which I and many others belong. He's a super preacher and evangelist, carrying the burden of his responsibilities lightly, or so it seems. What, I wonder, is his secret? Perhaps it is something about an individual's response to Jesus. This short gospel passage is the last three verses of Matthew chapter 11. Now Matthew chapter 11 explores various responses to Jesus and his kingdom message. And it concludes with this invitation to accept Jesus and in so doing, to find rest. Many people interpret this to mean that following Jesus is easy. But that is not quite what he says. Yes, we are invited to come to Jesus, to acknowledge our weariness and place our burdens at his feet. And there are so many heavy burdens we carry around with each day our guilty past misdeeds, our worries for the future, current concerns for our family and our friends, our understandable fear of COVID-19 and its effects, our society's racial and discriminatory attitudes, our distress at the state of our environment, our anger at injustice and cruelty. So many, we cannot possibly address them all. When we consider Jesus' easy yoke with the promise of rest, we would be forgiven for noticing that this less than rigorous ethic clashes with the challenges handed down to the 12 disciples 
in just the previous chapter of Matthew. In that, the disciples were urged to proclaim the good news, to cure the sick, to raise the dead, to cleanse the lepers and to cast out demons. That doesn't sound very less restful at all, does it? How can Jesus offer rest when he asks so much? What Jesus offers is not freedom from work but freedom from unrewarding labour. Such work can be soul-destroying, perhaps because we're ill-suited to it or motivated by fear or other negative emotions, a sense of futility or failure, perhaps. And there's also the weariness that comes from having nothing at all to do that really matters, or from being unemployed. The easy yoke means having something to do with a purpose that demands your all, that calls forth your best efforts, a challenge, or it might be motivated by a passion. Perhaps that is why Archbishop Cottrell is not overwhelmed by the task ahead. Maybe his secret is that he is motivated by a passion, it's a passionate desire to see God's kingdom come to fruition. He is working towards a certain future in which God's dreams will finally come true. To accept the yoke of the gentle and humble Christ Jesus is to embrace the most worthwhile task of sharing Jesus with others. And that brings rest to each of our souls. I know that as Archbishop of York, Stephen, and all the newly licensed lay ministers of the church, including our own Nicola McNally, of course, will work very hard, but they will work very hard for the coming of the kingdom and will find Jesus' yoke a perfect fit and will find the burden light and the yoke easy to bear. Let us join them in doing that, shall we? Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in every age you raise up pastors and leaders for your church to reflect the light of Christ and to lead us in the way of holiness. We thank you for those who have been shepherds of your flock. Bless your church today with gifts of care and nurture. Give a pastoral heart to bishops, priests and deacons and strengthen all who are called to be leaders of your people. This time we remember those who would have been ordained at this time, and those in other provinces who were ordained at Peter Tide. We pray for those beginning new ministries, especially for Nicola from this congregation as she begins her ministry in Tidesville. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Thank you for the gift of grace in the life of St. Osmond. Give wisdom and insight to all in authority in church and state. And particularly at this time, we remember Archbishop Stephen Cottrell, who's recently taken up his role as Archbishop of York. We pray for his care over this province and his role in the church in our nation and internationally. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you for those who give pastoral care to the sick and the suffering. This time we remember hospital chaplains, all those who go into 
places where people are sick. Help those who are distressed through following bad advice. Have mercy on those whose lives lack purpose or direction. And bring them the care they need for wholeness and healing. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you for all who have worked to lead others into the way of truth and are now at rest. Remembering among them those who have had pastoral care of these parishes in their time. Grant us in this life the spiritual guidance and pastoral care that will lead us to eternal life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father, make us worthy of everlasting joy in the fellowship of all your saints, in the glory of your kingdom, where you live and reign, God, for ever and ever. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise for ever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You gave us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and light, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace the people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remains steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice as he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, Form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at the last, with Mary the Mother of God, Mary Magdalene, 
Osmond and all the saints, to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we beseech you that the course of this world may be so peaceably ordered by your governance that your church may joyfully serve you in all godly quietness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Reminder that Bishop Paul will be joining us at Bunny on Sunday at 10.30 as we celebrate the Feast of St Mary Magdalene. There are still quite a number of places there, so if you'd like to come, um, do follow the instructions on our news sheet um, to book a place. Um, there's probably a reasonable chance, even if you don't book a place, that you'll get one, but you may want to guarantee your spot. Next week is the Feast of St James, and so our midweek service will be at the end of the week and will go online on Saturday. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Christ the Good Shepherd 
who laid down his life for the sheep, draw you and all who hear his voice to be one flock within one fold. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.